The moment passed without drama. A planner approved a route, an insurer priced a coastline, an energy firm greenlit a site. Each decision leaned on data that felt routine, authoritative, unquestioned. Only later did anyone realize the measurements weren't neutral anymore. They were coming from a system trained elsewhere, calibrated elsewhere, optimized for priorities no one in the room had set. By the time doubts surfaced, the models had learned, the standards had hardened, and the world was already being described in someone else's language. Remote sensing rarely announces itself. NASA defines it as the acquisition of information from a distance, using instruments mounted on satellites, spacecraft, aircraft, and drones to detect and record energy emissions, light, heat, radar reflections, signals captured without physical contact, then translated into measurements that describe the planet. Cameras in orbit chart wildfires and forests. Sonar systems aboard ships generate detailed images of the ocean floor. Radar satellites pierce cloud cover to track floods, ice sheets, and soil moisture across entire continents. The United States the Geological Survey relies on these systems to forecast droughts and monitor farmland. Emergency agencies use them to fight fires. Meteorological services depend on them to model hurricanes and atmospheric rivers days before landfall. Energy companies use them to decide where to drill, where to lay pipelines, where to place offshore platforms. Construction firms use them to plan airports, highways, ports, and megacities before a single worker arrives. Long before crews are deployed, the maps are assembled from orbit. The appeal is straightforward. Remote sensing delivers precision at scale, collected rapidly, often in real time, across terrain that is inaccessible or dangerous. It compresses timelines and reduces uncertainty. In industries where a single decision can commit billions of dollars, these measurements determine outcomes before steel is cut or concrete is poured. For decades, the United States dominated this domain. The hardware was expensive and technically demanding. Satellites required tens of billions of dollars to design, launch, and operate. Precision GPS timing systems were American-built. Imaging sensors, orbital platforms, and ground processing pipelines were developed domestically. NASA, the USGS, and elite universities produced the scientists who understood the instruments and built the science around them. The barriers to entry were so high that leadership appeared permanent. Then the economics changed. Machine learning dramatically expanded what could be extracted from cheaper sensors. Algorithms compensated for lower hardware fidelity with pattern recognition. Cloud processing replaced bespoke ground stations. Small satellites replaced a handful of massive platforms. Accuracy improved while costs collapsed. Remote sensing began to scale and China moved faster than anyone expected. For years, American experts assumed this remained a United States-led field. That assumption persisted well into the 2010s. Inside academic journals, however, the shift was already visible. A professor at New York University noticed it a decade ago. For generations, the most influential research came from NASA-linked teams and top United States universities. Then submissions from Chinese institutions surged, first steadily, then all at once. Before 1990, China published virtually nothing in remote sensing research. The United States accounted for more than 90% of global output. By 2000, China's share reached roughly 4%, comparable to India. The acceleration that followed was abrupt. By 2023, Chinese researchers were responsible for roughly half of all peer-reviewed publications in the field, while the United States' share fell below 10%. China now produces five times more remote sensing research than the United States. The industry itself expanded alongside the research shift. Market forecasts project remote sensing and its downstream applications tripling within a decade, reaching roughly $1.4 trillion by 2030. The growth spans energy, agriculture, construction, logistics, insurance, defense, and climate monitoring all dependent on increasingly granular observation of the physical world. Patents mirrored the academic transformation. Over a recent three-year period, China filed more than 43,000 remote sensing-related patents, which was actually the majority of global filings. Back in the 1990s, the United States held almost all of them. But today, Chinese entities dominate intellectual property across satellite imaging, radar systems, data fusion, and AI-driven interpretation. Machine learning applications really multiplied rapidly. Image classification, change detection, Predictive modeling and automated decision systems moved from laboratories into operational platforms. China's advantage was reinforced by cost. Low-cost AI development enabled faster iteration, broader experimentation, and quicker deployment. That meant more models were trained, more data was processed, and more applications reached the market. Institutional rankings reflected the shift, too. Data covering the period from 2011 to 2020 showed Chinese institutions occupying six of the top ten positions globally in remote sensing output. NASA and the National Science Foundation ranked seventh and eighth, while European institutions filled the remaining two slots. Those figures are now several years old, but honestly, the underlying pattern remained intact. Funding levels explained much of the divergence. 
During that same period, China's National Science Foundation spending accounted for over 53% of global output in the field. The United States contributed roughly 5%. The imbalance just compounded over time. More funding supported more researchers. More researchers produced more papers, and more papers generated more patents. Expertise accumulated where resources concentrated. Breakthroughs in adjacent fields reinforced the trend as well. Advances in quantum technologies, absolute ranging measurements in space, and precision timing fed directly into sensing accuracy. These capabilities once defined American leadership, but China integrated them rapidly into its sensing platforms. Hardware followed research. China's space program expanded alongside its sensing ambitions, and commercial drone manufacturing matured in parallel. When Chinese firms closed the hardware gap, they did so faster and at lower price points than Western analysts expected. In 2022 and 2023, roughly 70% of China's satellite launches were dedicated to remote sensing payloads. The proportion dipped slightly the following year, as launch activity broadened and the industry shifted towards smaller, next-generation sensing constellations. Those constellations are already in use. Off the coast of Hainan, fishing raft piers appear from orbit as precise geometric patterns scattered across the water. They are not captured in a single reconnaissance pass. They are monitored continuously, processed automatically, archived, compared, and updated. This is remote sensing functioning as infrastructure, not experiment. The consolidation did not stop at satellites and journals. It moved downstream into standards bodies, data platforms, and commercial middleware that most end users never see. Chinese firms began shaping file formats, compression protocols, and calibration benchmarks used to translate raw sensor data into usable products. Once those standards spread through construction software, insurance risk models, and logistics platforms, compatibility, not ideology, determined adoption. Firms optimized for what worked fastest and cheapest, and that increasingly meant Chinese designed systems. International procurement patterns followed. Developing countries, expanding ports, rail corridors, and energy grids bundled Chinese sensing services with financing and construction contracts. Satellite imagery, drone surveys, and AI-based terrain analysis were packaged into turnkey infrastructure deals. Governments that once relied on Western consultancies now received continuous data feeds embedded into Chinese-built digital twins of cities, coastlines, and industrial zones. The sensing layer arrived before regulation caught up. Export controls proved awkward. Unlike advanced chips or weapon systems, remote sensing services are hard to restrict once deployed. Data can be sold commercially, accessed through cloud platforms, or shared indirectly through third-party analytics firms. Even when Western governments flag security concerns, domestic companies found themselves dependent on foreign data sets already integrated into workflows. Rebuilding parallel systems meant rewriting software, retraining staff, and accepting years of degraded performance. Defense implications surfaced quietly. Modern military logistics, disaster response, and battlefield awareness rely on commercial sensing data alongside classified systems. As Chinese platforms expanded coverage and refresh rates, they became difficult to ignore even for non-Chinese users. Analysts noted that civilian satellites now revisit key locations multiple times per day, eroding the distinction between strategic reconnaissance and commercial observation. Control over cadence and resolution became a form of leverage without formal coercion. Climate monitoring deepened the dependence. Carbon markets, flood insurance, and adaptation financing require precise, continuous measurement of land use, emissions proxies, and environmental change. Chinese constellations increasingly supplied baseline data sets used by international organizations and private insurers. Once incorporated into historical models, switching sources risked breaking continuity, a technical problem with financial consequences. Consistency mattered more than origin. Talent flows reinforced the trend. Chinese universities expanded remote sensing programs aggressively, producing engineers fluent in both physics and machine learning. Graduates moved seamlessly between academia, state labs, and private firms. Western institutions struggled to match scale, constrained by fragmented funding and immigration friction. Conferences reflected the imbalance. Keynote sessions, review boards, and editorial leadership tilted toward Chinese institutions shaping research agendas. Private capital followed returns. Venture funding clustered around firms with access to the largest data sets and lowest marginal costs. Chinese startups trained models on proprietary national archives accumulated over years of launches. Western competitors faced higher data acquisition costs and regulatory hurdles. The competitive gap widened without dramatic failures, only relative underperformance. Insurance markets noticed first. Premium pricing for agriculture, coastal infrastructure, and shipping began incorporating higher frequency sensing updates. Firms with access to better data priced risk more accurately. Others lost margin or exited segments. The advantage compounded invisibly, quarter by quarter. By the time policymakers debated response, the system had matured. 
Remote sensing was no longer a discrete industry, but embedded infrastructure, woven into everything from urban zoning to commodity trading. Replacing it meant rebuilding measurement itself, not just suppliers. The quietest signal came from contracts. Renewal cycles favored incumbents with proven uptime and global coverage. Switching became a risk decision few executives wanted to justify. The maps kept updating, the models kept improving, and control over how the world is measured continued to drift, not with confrontation, but with routine adoption. The data keeps arriving. Satellites continue their passes, mapping forests, oceans, farmland, ports, and cities in ever finer detail. The measurements feed into planning systems, financial models, and operational decisions across the global economy. Seek, and you will find. Ask, and it will be given. Those who invested early now receive. Those who assumed permanence are left reading maps drawn by someone else. What lasts isn't the argument. It's the baseline. Once the world is measured a certain way, everything built on top of it adapts, quietly, permanently. Decisions start to feel obvious, then inevitable, then invisible. Nobody votes on that shift. Nobody announces it. It settles in through routine, through trust, through repetition. And when power finally shows itself, it won't arrive as force or spectacle. It will arrive as consensus, because the numbers already agree. We're glad you're enjoying this video. Please like and subscribe. Check out another video that is now on your screen.